Today, our goal is to explain what a leadership philosophy is and help you develop yours by boiling it down into a headline and three points. Our job today is not so much to invent a brand new leadership philosophy for you. It's very likely that you already have one in you. Our job is to help you uncover it and add some clarity to it. My goals really extend beyond this video. I'm gonna give you some steps that will require you to follow up on your own so that you ideally will continue to shape your leadership philosophy. So why is a leadership philosophy important to begin with? Well, I was working out with my son at the gym the other day and I saw a poster that said, thoughts become things. I've seen this type of statement all over the place. There's a clear connection between our mindset and our behaviors, our thoughts and our action. The bottom line is that our leadership philosophy drives everything about how we act as a leader. As a bridge to a leadership philosophy, let's talk about a personal philosophy. Your personal life philosophy is your belief system, the guiding principles that steer your life. It's made up of your worldview, your values, your priorities. You could say it's your theory for what life is about. Sometimes you hear people boil down their life philosophies into oversimplified statements like life is an adventure or life is suffering. Those two different personal philosophies are very likely to lead to drastically different experiences. And the same is true for our leadership philosophy. All of your internal thinking as a leader guides your decision-making and drives your behavior and your action. Now, a lot of people think that when something happens to them or around them, they just react. Many of us tend to think we have a stimulus response reaction to the things around us, as if it's automatic. Like when people sometimes overreact or make bad decisions, one common defense is to ask the question, well, what was I supposed to do? Or I had no other choice. But the truth is our reactions are not merely mechanical. We do make choices. We all see the world through a filter and that filter shapes how we see things, but also how we interpret them and react to them. In the same way, a leadership philosophy is like a life philosophy, but it's more specific. When you occupy or picture yourself as a leader, it changes your perspective. I don't know if you've ever been in a position of authority, but I've talked to many brand new teachers, supervisors, athletic coaches over the years, and they are shocked at how different the world looks when they are first in a position of authority over other people. When you're a leader, the group's successes or failures become a reflection of your leadership. And that weight of responsibility on you expands and adds pressure. That pressure exaggerates the importance of your attitudes, beliefs, and feelings about other people, about their nature. That responsibility really amps up your level of motivation, your sense of urgency, and the way you pay attention to others. So your leadership philosophy is that unseen guiding force behind your actions, especially about how you relate to other people as their leader. Now let's get started brainstorming on the various ways you can uncover and clarify the leadership philosophy that you may already have in you. And we'll look at three ways to recognize it. The first way is to think about the leaders you admire and look up to as role models, especially those you have personally worked with. What is it about them that resonates with you? In another video, I mentioned a former supervisor I worked with, Mike, and I looked up to how hard Mike worked. He led by example. I admired how he treated people really well and listened to them, even when things were busy. So think of leaders you've worked under personally. Who have been your best coaches, teachers, supervisors? What did you admire about them? What made them better than other leaders you've worked with? What did they do or not do that makes them stand out to you? Pick a few leaders that you know and jot down everything you admire about them and then look for what those leaders might have in common. Do you notice any patterns in those qualities? What are the commonalities between and among those good leaders? And that'll tell you what you value, what you prioritize, and what you likely already have in you as an emerging leader. 
The second way is to look at various leadership theories and approaches out there. This can feel a little bit like school, but it works. So actual leadership theories aren't leadership philosophies, but they do have values, priorities, and beliefs woven into them. And our leadership philosophies are a lot like our own unspoken theories about leadership. So I'll put a link to a list of various leadership theories below and below this video, and you can look at some of those as your homework. And as you learn about various leadership approaches, some will stand out to you and others won't. For example, I'm really drawn to the theory of servant leadership. I'm a supervisor currently, the chair of my department, and I see that a big part of my beliefs as a leader is that I should be there to support and help everybody I supervise. I am there for them, in other words. There are about a dozen other clear schools of thought on leadership, and each of them has its own set of beliefs, priorities, and values in them. Just like a menu at a restaurant, some of these theories will quickly stand out as you look them over, and it might point to your leadership philosophy, your unspoken theory of what a leader's job is. You might end up saying to yourself, well, I'd like to be a transformational leader. And then within that school of thought, there are various beliefs, priorities, and values that you can use to learn about yourself. And third, how would you like to be described by others? What ideal qualities, what adjectives would you like others to use to characterize your leadership approach? So pick three for the moment. So let's just pretend you have just led your team through a six month project and it's time for your team to evaluate you. What three words or phrases would you like to see in that evaluation? So for me, I would like my team to say, I'm a good facilitator, I'm supportive, and I'm collaborative. Your list may be completely different than mine, of course, but feel free to pause and jot down three words or phrases on paper. And these three words may not currently describe your strengths, but they can give you something to aspire to, something to include in your leadership philosophy statement. So far, we've explained why a leadership philosophy is important, and we talked about different ways to get your ideas out there on the table. So we've been brainstorming really so far. Now let's get hands-on and turn to even more application. Let's begin crafting a draft leadership philosophy statement for you. And there's no right way to do this, but we're gonna take a fairly concise approach as our first step. We're going to develop a one sentence headline about your leadership philosophy, and then three bullet points to add a little bit of detail to that headline. Let's get started with the headline. Given everything we've talked about so far, fill in the blank to this headline. My main job as a leader is to blank. And keep that phrase nice and short. You can fill this out however you'd like to. And Here's my example. My main job as a leader is to help each follower reach their highest potential. You can pause the video and draft your own headline. Remember to keep it simple. It's tempting to make it sound fancy, but this is just for you. Use plain language to make sure your thinking is clear. The next three bullet points help add some detail to explain how you'd put that headline into action. The first bullet is one sentence about how you will handle yourself to help put that headline we just wrote into action. And mine sounds like this. First, I will lead by example to set a high standard for others. I'm striving for plain language so I don't hide behind fancy sounding words. And you can pause the video to draft your first bullet. How will you behave as a leader? The second bullet explains how you will treat other people. Here's my second bullet. Second, I will work with followers to help put their strengths into action and I will coach them on areas they need to develop. In plain language, how will you treat and orient toward other people? Again, pause the video if it helps. The third bullet explains how you will keep the team moving forward toward its goals. Here's my third bullet. Third, to keep the team moving forward, I will clearly communicate our goals and provide the team support to reach those goals. So for you, how will you keep the team moving forward toward its goals? And again, hit pause if it helps. 
Now, together on paper, a basic outline of my leadership philosophy looks like this. And once you have a draft, for your next step, you may want to do an immediate second draft where you simplify the language to the bare bones. And you could just leave it in an outline like this and keep it somewhere visible as a reminder. Or you could write a paragraph or even a page about each of these points to help you really crystallize it and let it sink into your mind and into your heart more deeply. But I find it's best to start simple so you're not hiding behind a colorful vocabulary. If you're like me, you may want to come back and revise what you have written several times before you feel like you've really got it nailed down. Before we go, here's a recap and some reminders. First, whether we realize it or not, our leadership philosophy drives everything else. It's our filter for how we see things, interpret things, and how we respond. Second, we talked about a few ways to uncover the philosophy that may already be in you or one that you aspire to. And third, in light of that, you can now follow the outline and draft a clear and concise leadership philosophy for yourself. I'll put links to some leadership theories in the description below this video. I'll also put links to my online classes at the Communication Coach Academy. Thanks, God bless, and I will see you in the next video.